a quick introduction about myself. So my name is Alessandro Benedetti. I, I was born in Tarquinia, an ancient Tuscan city in the center of Italy, and I am an R&D software engineer. I'm also the director of SID, and I have a master in computer science. I am an Apache Lucene and Solar Committer, and I am an Apache Solar PMC member. I've been working with Apache Lucene and Solar since 2010, and I've been contributing back to the community through codes, integrations, and also uh, support in the mailing list and sharing my ideas and research at conferences. Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch is built on top of Apache Lucene, so it was actually uh, quite easy to also switch to that topic. It's very well written, it's in a very complete open source search engine, and we've been working, and I'm the first one who's been working with Elasticsearch for a long time. From my passions, I love machine learning, and especially integrating machine learning technologies with information retrieval to improve the user experience in satisfying their information needs. I've also been working in integrating semantic. We have a question. Closer to the microphone, better. Okay, let's try. Thank you. And integrating semantic technologies to, to improve, again, the user experience in search, identifying entities and understanding natural language. As obvious, I'm a beach volleyball player and there's no border activities that I do in Italy when I go back from London, because in London, you know, we don't have that much snow nor sand, actually. So over to Andrea for the introduction. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Andrea Gazzanini. I'm a colleague of Alessandro, and uh, uh, we are working together in season. Uh, I'm born in Viterbo, which is close to Tarquinia, because it's in the center of Italy, close to Rome. I'm a software engineer, actually having software engineer since 2010, uh, master in economy, economy uh, programming passionate, and uh, already creator, already open source creator. Um, I've been working with Elasticsearch uh, Elastic and Solar since 2010, more or less. And prior to that, I've been um, uh, an Apache Qubit committer. Qubit is an Apache project, which is a um, message-oriented middleware, so very few things in common with the information retrieval field. Father, husband, and uh, bus player. Also, Chapman is a player with another kind of instrument. So we talked about CS already in the latest updates. So we are going to just transition over these slides and let's let's move to the agenda for today. We're going to introduce a ranking evaluator, the open source version, which is currently available in our GitHub repository and is ready to be used. And it is a Java library mostly. Then we transition to ready ranking evaluator enterprise. We're going to describe why we wanted to evolve ready ranking evaluator and what were like main problems that ready ranking evaluator had to overcome. Specifically, we're going to talk about the query discovery phase, which is an ability of ready ranking evaluator enterprise of evaluating directly a search API layer instead of having to trigger queries against Solar and Elasticsearch. Then we are going to talk about rating generation, which has been for a long time quite a, a huge problem for a direct evaluator because it was just supporting like a JSON list of ratings, which is not very user friendly. Finally, the exploration of the evaluation results. Ready Rank Evaluator Open Source was able to do that. It was um, returning an output in XML, JSON, uh, was able to store this information in a NoSQL database, was able to use 
like an Excel um, inversion of the results, also like a simple application. We wanted something more, something easier to use, something actually uh, more graphical, to be honest, and like a web application feel alike. So now Andrea is going to talk about crazy ranking about web, the open source version. Yes, uh, as I said, the, at the very beginning, uh, we uh, created the rated ranking evaluator and put it in open source. This is still available in uh, our GitHub repository. So briefly, what, what is it? It is an open source library uh, used for search quality evaluation. Uh, we use uh, a set of inputs, mainly ratings, for executing uh, search quality evaluation iterations and provide uh, different metrics in order to um, describe uh, iteration after iteration where your system is going to. Um, it supports two main engines, Apache, uh, sorry, Apache Solar and Elasticsearch. Uh, it is a development tool. We will see uh, later what it means. And uh, uh, the last links are related to the community, the, the mailing list uh, where the user and the GitHub repository when, when, where the users are contributing and uh, are providing feedbacks uh, about uh, our early. So this is... Uh, <clears throat> We will meet some slides uh, like this uh, we, uh, that illustrates the, the main uh, milestone of uh, uh, RRE. In 2018, we uh, were hired for a project where the customer uh, asked us uh, to, to implement some features and fix their search infrastructures. But other than that, it asked explicitly of uh, something that could be able to measure the progresses because uh, the, the, um, yeah, the customer wanted from us uh, something uh, uh, being able to measure uh, iteration after iteration, hiring after hiring, uh, the difference between uh, the beginning and uh, the, 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 the the, the, the improvements after implementations, fixes, changes, or so on. So we started working on a regimental search quality evaluation tool. In uh, uh, June 2018, uh, we presented the first version of RRE at the Lucin and Solar London User Group. And later, the first version, 1.0, um, uh, was presented at iStack um, Europe, still in London, in October, if I remember. Um, what, what is the, uh, the, the idea uh, of RRE? It's a development tool that um, it is installed on the developer workstation, and um, it um, becomes part of the build process. So every time uh, you as developer uh, apply some changes, some fixes, some improvements, the build process uh, starts again and uh, RRE executes a, uh, a search quality evaluation iteration. It encourages an incremental and iterative approach. So uh, the idea is, uh, I start from version 1.0, for example. If I have to apply some change, instead of changing one, the 1.0 version, it's better to clone that version and call it, let's say, 1.1, apply that changes. So we end up having two versions, 1.0 and 1.1. And in the next build phase, RRE will execute a search quality evaluation iteration over those two versions. And it will provide metrics for both versions, two, three, four, 
how many as you want, of course. Um, I'm talking about the iterations. So in general, at the end of a build, you are able to see the, the in terms of metrics the direction where the system where your system is going on in terms of uh, search quality evaluation. So the domain model of uh, um, uh, RRE is quite complex, but at the end, uh, uh, let's say we have a query associated with uh, some metrics. Uh, we introduced some other uh, grouping concept like query group topic, which corresponds to the information need, the corpus, which is the, that's the data set that we are using for the iterations, and so on. But at the end, uh, let's say uh, we have a query and the several metrics that are computed for each version, remember the iterations. So this is the big picture, picture about how RRE works. We have an input layer which consists of uh, uh, a data set, which is the test data set, the test collections, a configuration uh, where that provides, uh, for example, I don't know uh, um, what metrics we, we need. There are several available metrics, but Maybe I'm interested only on uh, NDCG, for example. And then the ratings. The ratings are the uh, query document uh, rating triples that provides the ground truth and uh, <coughs> the basic for computing uh, the, the, the metrics. So RRE takes this input, these inputs actually, and uh, targets a search platform. Uh, Apache Solar and uh, uh, Elasticsearch are the two platforms currently supported. Using the queries provided in the rating against the dataset with the configuration, with a specific version of configuration, it produces the evaluation data, the metrics that can be made available through different formats. JSON is the native output format. We have a console, a graphical console, a graphical user interface, uh, an Excel file, or a um, PDF. So this is the big picture. There is the developer of the center, the, 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 the IDE in, in the center monitor, and then RRE console, in this case, in, on, is on the left. So every time I apply a, a change in my configuration, I build the system and the console with the metrics refreshes. So this is RRE open source, which is available at the link of the pages on the, of the page we were seeing before. Then we move, moved forward towards a software that is based on RRE and we call it RRE Enterprise. So in 2009, 2019, sorry, uh, we started working on this uh, idea. The idea of RRE Enterprise is, uh, uh, was something to overcome the, limit of, uh, the limits of uh, RRE open source, which again is a development tool. It's something that is stored on the developer workstation. We wanted to build something uh, that could be used at uh, uh, in, in enterprise level, something uh, that could uh, provide cert evaluation services in a black box installed uh, in, on, in the cloud, on in the customer premises or somewhere and uh, uh, that could provide uh, search quality evaluation services through API, through um, a centralized console and so on. Something that could have a commercial perspective. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the uh, dissemination work about RRE didn't stop because we presented it, uh, Alessandro actually uh, presented it at uh, ISTAC uh, um, America and uh, the University of New York in the middle of 2019. Uh, so in 
the development of uh, uh, RRE Enterprise started a few months later, and uh, in two th between 2020 and 2021, we built uh, the features that we are going to describe, the main features that we are going to describe. Query discovery, uh, a user interface for collecting uh, uh, ratings, a browser plugin actually, and uh, the, um, another feature which is a consequence of the browser plugin called uh, ID discovery. So, the first one, uh, in order to explain the query discovery, uh, we need to um, uh, have the, again, have again a look at how RRE open source works. The input layer, RRE processes that data and targets solar or elastic search. And this is actually the, the main issue. Why? Because, uh, oops. Uh, mm, I was saying RRE uh, targets directly Elasticsearch or Solar. Usually, uh, the design of a web application is a bit different because the separation of concerns and the decoupling of uh, uh, responsibilities um, um, is implemented using different layers. So we have the client layer, the, what uh, is called the data source layer on the right that hosts some middleware, Redis, Postgres, and RPBMS, Elasticsearch, Solar, and so on. And in the middle, there is usually the so-called business logic layer, a, a layer that hosts the logic of the system, receives uh, input from the client applications and uh, implements the, the, the system logic by orchestrating the different systems that are in the data source layer. RRE targets, RRE open source targets directly the data source layer. But what we wanted to do is to test and evaluate the real system. And in order to do that, we need to pass through the API layer. Why? Because in the API layer, maybe there is some uh, query rewriting logic that we are not able to capture if we target directly Elasticsearch or Solar, I mean, the data source layer. So what is the problem? Uh, the API layer is something that is very specific to a uh, it's very tied, sorry, to a very specific domain. There is no a standard. There is, we have standard protocols like, I don't know, uh, SOAP, uh, GraphQL, uh, REST, RESTful, JSON, and so on. But if we go deep in the content of the, I mean, those protocols are only related to the envelope of uh, what is a, exchanged between client and server but if we go inside the content the body of the envelope is something that is very specific to to the, the application so we are we cannot build uh, a system that evaluates an api layer using the response of that api because we would end up having uh, one system for each api right so the idea is uh, targets the API uh, layer in order to trigger the business logic and see the, and, and uh, find the corresponding uh, search engine request that is sent to Solar or Elasticsearch. This is what we call uh, query discovery. Our rating concept uh, splits the query concept between search API request, 
and search engine requests. At the very beginning, we have only the search API requests. Using this, we are able to trigger the business logic and using a component called the query discovery, we are able to correlate that <coughs> so, sorry, search request, search API request with a search engine request. That search engine, search engine request we will, uh, we will be used, we will use for uh, evaluating the target system. So in our area open source, there is no query discovery because we are targeting directly the search engine. So in the first step, we are using the input data for uh, sending queries to Solar or Elasticsearch and the response <coughs> that the, the responses are used for producing the evaluation data. In the in RRE enterprise, uh, things are a little bit more complex because of, as a first phase, remember we have only the search API requests associated to the rating. So we need to find the corresponding search engine request. The gray box query well, discovery as exactly this purpose. So at the end of the point one, we have our readings associated with the search engine request. Then using that request, we can target the search engine and use, use the uh, responses for producing the evaluation data. Yeah, reading generation, I, <coughs> So, reading generation uh, with RRE open source is only able to receive explicit ratings. Um, and this is something that, as we will see in the next slide, is, uh, requires a bit of effort. Another um, big part where our effort has been concentrated is in the implicit ratings, <coughs> implicit ratings um, generation. Um, so RRE open source accepts only explicit ratings. RRE enterprise provides another component which is able to manage the other kind of uh, ratings. So, uh, the explicit ratings, of course, are something that are provided explicitly by domain experts. Uh, this is great because uh, usually they are associated to a high accuracy. But uh, of course, what is it required? The domain experts, which is not something very easy to, to have. And uh, even uh, if we have those domain experts, the, the rating generation is something that is very uh, requires a huge effort because someone has to run the queries, uh, take notes about the results, this is relevant, this is not. There is no a tool for helping those people in collecting the, the, the ratings. So our idea, is to, uh, uh, um, which has been implemented in a Chrome plugin, in a browser plugin called the Judgment Collector Browser Plugin, is to provide a Chrome plugin, something that is uh, uh, installed in the browser, and uh, um, that uh, applies an overlay layer on top of a arbitrary user, um, arbitrary, sorry, website. So what is the advantage? The user who has to provide the ratings can use uh, his uh, uh, portal. The, the customer can use for providing the ratings, the customer web portal. So it, it has a very uh, low learning curve because the customer is supposed to know the web portal that is, is running. So um, the, um, once enabled, uh, the, the, the plugin apply uh, 
Yes, an overlay layer on top of the user web portal and on each search results, the, the user can uh, indicate the, uh, the rating, very relevant, marginally relevant, not relevant, and so on. At the end, through the button, that the ratings can be sent to RRE, RRE Enterprise, which provides a specific endpoints that accepts those kind of data. Uh, the third component I was talking, I was mentioning before, the IT discovery, uh, <coughs> the IT discovery component is a consequence of this plugin. Why? Because uh, in the explicit ratings of RRE open source, the user is providing for each query the relevant documents in terms of document identifiers where the identifiers are the internal identifiers used in the search engine. Here, things happen on the client side. We are on, on a web portal where uh, the result, uh, the first result here, Populonia, is uh, we cannot say in advance that the internal identifier we use uh, on the search engine side is here as part of the HTML page. So in the usual scenarios, the plugin sends a set of information, textual or identifiers that are found in the HTML part of that uh, element and uh, a specific component on RRE enterprise tries to correlate that part with an internal identifiers used on the search engine side. This is the ID discovery. So I think, yes, passing to Alessandro. Thanks, Andrea. Thanks, Andrea. So we talked about the explicit feedback. So how residential user enterprise allow a judge or a set of judges to provide ratings explicitly for using the user interface of their search engine and rating directly search results. Now, uh, we wanted to provide also support for implicit feedback. So what is normal implicit feedback? Is a feedback collected directly from users' interactions. So we made rated ranking by whether enterprise able to collect users' interactions. In which way? So we provide a REST endpoint. Rated ranking about whether enterprise is a server, effectively, it's closing a REST API set of endpoints. And the interaction endpoint is able to collect a JSON body. This JSON describes a user interaction. So let's take a look to the types of user interactions that the ranking of other enterprise supports currently, potential customizations, and the information we store. First of all, to each user interaction, we associate a collection. So this is the corpus, the data collection associated to the query and the search result. Then a human readable query, which tries to represent the semantic of the, of the user information need, and a black box query request. So this is effectively a, an HTTP request, a full HTTP request. So you are able to reproduce this request, just execute it again. In this way, you are triggering the query as it happened from the front end. Then the document ID, the interaction interacted with, the timestamp, the time when the interaction happened, and potentially the position where the document was in the search result ranking list when the query happened. The most important element of this JSON is the type of the interaction. So we support currently the possibility of tracking clicks. So we just add an attribute in the JSON object click equal one or an add to cart. So in this case, when something happens in the front end that triggers an add to cart, we are able to push this data to the enterprise. 
e se è in and potentially the revenue associated to that sale. These are the four types of user interactions we currently support. Uh, of course, it's open to contribution and actually easy extension. So depending on the kind of, of, in, of interaction you want, you can reuse any of these if it's close to the semantic of the one you're interested in, or potentially you can introduce your own. So first of all, we collect interactions in a JSON format. Then, when the Leader and Keyword Enterprise collects an interaction, we store the interaction in a NoSQL database internal to the Leader and Keyword Enterprise. Then, when the admin wants to generate implicit ratings, we let the user admin decide the online metric to use to then generate the rating. We currently support the click through rate, the add to cut ratio, the sale rate, and the revenue rate. To give you an idea of how you calculate the click through rate of a specific query document pair, we sum all the clicks received for that specific query document pair divided by the sum of the impressions. So the, the final type of user interaction that the Blank Evaluator is able to collect are also impressions. So anytime the front end show a search result to a user, the front end can interact with the Blank Evaluator Enterprise or potentially the, the API of the customer and push also the impressions. Once the admin decides which one of the online methods we want the implicit ratings to be calculated from, we are able to do the estimation. So the way we, we currently estimate the relevance of a query document pair is through a simple click model. So we calculate the metric score, and most of these metrics are from zero to one as a global minimum and maximum. Of course, uh, depending on the data set, uh, you may not reach a uh, maximum click through rate for any query document pair. And then we map to a scale in, in the case of the current scale supported from zero to four, where zero is not relevant and four is extremely relevant. Uh, to make it simple, we actually do a little bit uh, of different calculations in, uh, behind the scenes, but to make it simple, normally when you have like a terrible click to rate is associated to a zero rating and the perfect click to rate is associated to the perfect rating for the query document pair. In this way, we are able to generate a rating set with no particular interaction from the app, but just collecting users' interactions. The final topic of today's presentation is the exploration of evaluation results. So in, in this area, we're going to do a quick demo of the user interface of rated ranking evaluator enterprise. We decided we, the, the way we were returning results uh, was actually not optimal. It was not easy to navigate results of the evaluation. It was not easy to have a quick overview of how the evaluation happened. And also, to be honest, investigating the, the, the different query document pairs, the queries, the topics, and trying to understand why, for example, for a certain query and document, you, you got like terrible metric score was not easy at all. So uh, we developed a user interface using React. And this user interface has a support for the configuration side of a direct evaluator. So you can configure the execution, uh, configuring the targets, configuring the rating set, generating the ratings, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then the navigation of the evaluation results part, which offers three different tabs, an overview, which is a quick view. Uh, mostly designed for business stakeholder to have like a quick view of the results and also an overview of the different metrics across the different collections you are evaluating. The explore tab, which aims to have like a deep view dedicated to software engineers that want to explore query documents per specific query, specific topic, specific query loops. And finally, the compare tab, where you compare two different evaluations. So now we are going to have a quick uh, demo. Let me see 
if we are sharing this probably we will have in the professor help us here we go then we reshare you share and we share chrome right now you're sharing the, this data so this is the user interface of the ranking of our weather enterprise and this is the overview tab on the left hand side you have a summary of all, of all the collections you have already so this is the uh, evaluation results dashboard so first you executed an evaluation of a search api of a search engine and you got back results from the ranking of our weather enterprise showing various calculus uh, for the different metrics you you show so on the left hand side you can select the different collections in this case we have an e-commerce collection and a very short immediate summary that tells you that generally with the latest in evaluation you got some improvement for this collection so let's see some more detail so if you select the collection you see the different metrics that were calculated for this evaluation specifically we decided to calculate precision at 10 and ECG at 10 at expected reciprocal rank at 10. You have three different widgets for uh, each of the metric. And in a short summary, you see the score for the metric for the collection and potentially the improvement or regression in score from the previous iteration. So Potentially, you have a continuous integration environment where you always evaluate the search quality of your system. So you had the previous deploy that got a different score in expected reviewer rank. The current evaluation showed an improvement. And this is easy to, to take a look um, like visually. And it happens for all the widgets. So the collection, the score, potentially an improvement or a regression, or potentially you have the same score of the previous iteration. Then you can also expand the history for this metric. Expanding the history, you can see the past evaluations with the date and the score for that specific date. If you mouse over on each of the points in the timeline, you can see the specific score for the specific collection. You can also zoom to have like a better idea of the details of your improvements. In this case, we have just one collection. Potentially, you may have multiple collections, and you can enable one after the other to just see the collections you're interested in. This is an overview. This is quite actually useful for a search manager, for example, an engineering manager that wants to take a look quickly after a deployment to the status of the different collections and the status of the progress or regression for the different metrics, the stakeholders are interesting. The explore allow you to explore a specific iteration. We select the collection we are interested in, potentially a couple of metrics or all the metrics. And you see the score for the different topics. You can expand a topic. Potentially, you, you can have like additional query groups. In this case, we have just the default query group and also different queries. So we see for the query the specific score for the metric. So this is much easier and much more readable in comparison to the output of a direct human way of open source. Additionally, you can also open a specific query. For a specific query, we're going to see the iteration of the evaluation, the black box query request, so the HTTP request, the search engine related request. So this is the output of the query discovery phase. Originally, we just got this request. The direct evaluator enterprise was able to deduce the search engine request. In this case, you can see it is a solar query. Finally, you see the, the documents 
with the rating associated title and an ID. The last part in the in the tabs of uh, by the evaluation uh, result dashboard is the compare. So you can select a couple of iterations, metrics, and then compare the score of the metrics across the different topics, the different queries, and potentially just take a look to the to the query info. This, this may be useful when you want to when you get there of like a, a couple of different iterations that offers different configuration and want to take a look in the in which kind of topics and query groups in a specific iteration excels in comparison to another. So these tools offer you the possibility of exploring a little bit more in details what happened and how the different search results compare. And it may be useful to understanding why a specific metric was higher in an iteration in comparison to another. Now the demo ends. We are going to go with a future works slide. So we are going to go back to the slide. And the final remarks and questions. Here we go. Oh, sorry. Slides, slides, slides. Yeah, yeah, slides. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We just need to go from this one. Oh, these are the slides. Sorry. Okay, everything crashed. Of course, we clicked too much. <laughs> Don't worry. Yes, now we need to share here. And yes, perfect. So the future directions. Right. So we're going to release with the free usage plan the director of the enterprise, and we are going to also uh, discuss different ways of registering and using it. Uh, this is going to happen in the next couple of months, so you stay up to date and you will get news. We are also going to support and improve the configuration side of the things, multimedia documents, property, so like video, audio supports, to so have like a better idea of the, the query document curves. Also, uh, we are going to design and develop some intelligent insights on weak performing queries in the way that the ranking evaluator and surprise is able to identify uh, like troublesome queries and raise them to the attention to the admin and trying to understand also potential reasons why a specific query is not performing well. Uh, understanding, for example, the similarities between different queries that are not performing well from the search engine request perspective, potentially. And finally, we are also going to continue working on the way we are modeling clicks and, and all the other user interaction in estimated relevance. So it's now time for the uh, questions, if you have any. Uh, from the audience offline or online. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, are you able to hear me? Okay. Yes, yeah. Uh, I was curious, how much are you seeing folks who are using uh, RREE using the built in UI you made with React versus something like Grafana or Kibana as the sort of dashboard for metrics? So, do you want to answer? No, we, we, we didn't. So, the reason we. No, no, the, the reason we went for a React user interface was because we wanted to, to effectively have like a custom uh, way of exposing results. Uh, potentially, yeah, like Banner, Grafana would have been a, a potential. A way of doing that, but we wanted also to give the ability of configuring and running evaluations and effectively potentially like adding some more logic in the front end. And I think that was the main reason. That was the main reason yeah. we went for a custom user interface. Yeah, there are a lot of things. Uh, there are a lot of things that are um, 
have been hidden from from the demo things that you can configure and things things that yeah basically the, the most part are on the configuration side uh, which are not so easy i think uh, in, uh, in general purposes reporting tools like ibana grafana and so on so we uh, decided to go uh, for a <clears throat> custom react application does this answer your question yes thank you there we go. <clears throat> Uh, this is Brian Johnson. I had a couple of questions. Yes, can folks hear me? Yes, we can. Well, the first one is uh, when when rater when the evaluators are rating uh, in the actual UI, do you think that they're biased by rank position? Do you think it would be better to show the query item pairs independently and not in the native UI? Yeah. So we 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 thought about that. Then, Andrea, if you have any additional consideration, you can add on top. So that's true. We, we thought about like showing just query document pairs. Um, no. So we, we thought about like showing just query document pairs to the user, to the UI, instead of the ranked list. But at the, at the same time, we wanted to be something as easy as possible to be used by like judges internal organizations which are like very accustomed and normally they are using the, the user interface in their like daily job so we thought like okay uh, a compromise uh, yeah potentially having something that show you uh, one by one query results a single query result associated to the query may uh, remove the bias on the other end maybe uh, someone which is not that much tech savvy could find easier to to just type the query see the search results and then start typing and assigning the, the rating but i agree with you that potentially this can be like an extension of the plugin uh, of the chrome plugin to like shuffle potentially the, the results or just show them uh, one by one. Okay, great. Thank you. 